My next guest shot to fame as the cool, calm and collected investor on Dragon's Den. But with his latest project, he proves it's not all about the money, as he's written a book aimed at encouraging literacy for all. Please welcome James Kahn. <laughs> James, lovely to see you. It's all part of these galaxy quick reads, which are encouraging people who are, you know, fallen shy of reading or just find it such hard work now to read. But yours, in a way, is, is double-edged. It's a great edged. shot, isn't it? It is a good shot. You, you look very good on that. You, you look, I'd buy a used car <laughs> from you. <laughs> you. But get the life you really want. It sounds like one of those... They used to do the 50, those American self-help books. About, uh, I can make you a millionaire in 17 minutes, you know, kind of thing. But realistic? No, I tell you what it is, Alan. This was more about in Britain today. There are nearly 12 million people who struggle with literacy, and this is a government-backed initiative that kind of is designed to help people read. So the idea mm. is to create these short, sharp books that you could almost read in your lunch hour, and it's a way of getting people back into reading. Mm. And you know, I was quite interested in doing it because I think the better that you are at reading and literacy the stronger opportunities you get in terms of employment. Because nowadays, I think, when an employer is looking at your CV, you know, your written skills, your communication skills, your spelling skills, all those things, I think, are quite important. And because people just don't read enough, mm. this was an opportunity to create something that I thought would make it easier. Because a lot of people glance at a newspaper or, or read captions or, you know, read bits and bobs on the telly or read tweets or, you know, texts or whatever. But reading books, reading extended copy, a lot of people have got out of the habit of reading books now. And it's really a muscle, isn't it, reading? If you, if you don't use your arm muscles, your arm atrophies, if you don't use your reading muscles, then, you know, your powers of reasoning can be affected. It's very important. And that's why I thought this was such a great concept where, if you notice, I mean, this is literally very thin. Mm. You know, it's a quick read. You can literally, in a lunch hour, get inspiration, get ideas. And I think the government are really doing as much as they can to encourage it. And this was just my opportunity of giving something back. I was talking at the very top of the show to three rural entrepreneurs who've really gone out there, one's we making like those, logs. We like well, entrepreneurs. I like any kind of entrepreneur, <laughs> because it shows you've got off your bum, doesn't it, really? <laughs> and how to go, even if it's only being the best gardener or the best window cleaner in your street. And, and anyway. Is that a difficulty today? In, when people say that magic word, recession, there's a kind of defeated gaze comes over all and say, well, that's it, I can't do anything. It does tend to stultify any kind of personal ambition, the word recession. You think, what's the point? I won't be able to achieve it. So you presumably are the man to get the individual going with that kind of, I can do it. I mean, I've, um, in fact, I've just written another book which is called Start Your Own Business in Seven Days, which is all about that, giving the entrepreneur that very specific guide that says, how do you actually do it? Because coming up with ideas is easy. The question is, how do you implement? And having done Dragon's Den and seen nearly a 1,000 people come on the show pitching ideas, mm. what I've done is taken all the lessons that I learned from people who came and pitched and thought, making that pitch, what would I have yeah. done? And that's really what I've encapsulated in the book that says, start your business in seven days. In a nutshell, just give us a few of those, a few sort of bullet points on what to do and, and more than anything, perhaps, what not to do. I mean, you do want to start your own business. What are the must-haves, the must-dos? I think, for me, one of the biggest ones is making sure that the idea that you've come up with, is it really a business or is it a hobby? So many people have come up with an idea. It's a great hobby, something you can do in your leisure time, but it's not a business. So my first question would be, is it a hobby or is it an idea? Secondly, have you gone out and spoken to customers who are prepared to buy it? So many people speak to mum, dad, brother, sister, who say, you know what, it's amazing, you have to do it, but the market isn't going to pay for it. Mm. So is it really a viable idea? So if there's a market for it, if people are prepared to pay for it, you must do that first. Mm. Don't just rely on friends and family, because to a large extent, they tell you what you want to hear. They're biased and very encouraging. Just a tad biased. Which is very nice <laughs> of them, but it won't get you to market. Indeed. Wonderful. Good luck with the book, good luck with the read. You yourself, you're busy at the moment, obviously, always busy. Always looking for that next opportunity. 
and that's next deal, Anna. And, and people tell me that you're a bit of an entrepreneur yourself. Well, do you know, funny you should say, <laughs> now I'm hopeless. <laughs> I'm absolutely hopeless. The teacher at school in the third form at junior school said he'd make a very good door-to-door -door <laughs> salesman. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm useless. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my thanks to James Carr. <laughs> <Khan. laughs> <laughs>